All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to day two of the Winship Symposium. I hope uh, you found yesterday's session uh, to be exciting and uh, informative. Uh, we have another exciting afternoon of uh, key talks hitting various important themes that uh, we have uh, discussed some, in some detail yesterday and some new themes will uh, be brought out during the presentations. Uh, one of the first things that we wanted to do today is uh, to bring back the summary from yesterday's breakout session. As you know, there were three breakout sessions uh, during the last hour of yesterday's program, and we aligned them in three different themes. One is uh, the main under our overarching question was, what can Winship do to improve uh, disparities in the three themes? And one was by understanding biological aspects of cancer disparities. That theme was led by Vezal, who is a director of our CMB program. Uh, the second theme was improving cancer treatments for patients, uh, minority patients. And that breakout was led by Tofik Owanikoko uh, from our DDT program. And uh, the third breakout was uh, studying disparities in cancer prevention, access to treatment and survivorship. And that was led by Dr. Mylon Torres from uh, the CPC program. So we're gonna have each of those uh, groups provide a very brief high level readout to this group that we can continue to think about uh, in the days and weeks ahead and months ahead as Winship's efforts to improve and address disparities for minority patients. So the first breakout group uh, we're gonna hear from is uh, Dr. Wei Zhao. Uh, so Wei, let me turn it to you. Thanks, Ron. So in our breakout, breakout session, talking about the biological aspects of this cancer disparity, we divided our topic into three different areas. The first area is cancer uh, genetic uh, predisposition, whether on a population base, uh, uh, the people with certain allele are at high risk of getting certain type of cancer. And uh, the example we focused on is this SNPs that are identified by uh, genome-wide SNP analysis on the long arm of chromosome 8, 8Q24. And uh, initially it was found to be a uh, patient at high risk of developing a prostate cancer. And the later study confirmed that, but also discovered it appears to be at a high uh, percentage of patients with Af African or uh, American origins. So we discussed uh, this finding and uh, uh, Nathan Bao from Clark Atlanta Uni University actually showed some data indicating using the latest technique, uh, this data may not be quite true. So the challenge is really the current computation and experimental challenges due to the, uh, due to the mixed ancestry in the US population. This population is really a mixture of variety of uh, uh, people due to historical reasons. And the potential solution for this is uh, with, uh, the, the consensus is we should have consistent methods with threshold, thresholds for the assignment of African and the European ancestry in the African-American genome. This type of research we see as a future opportunity for faculty in the CMB program to collaborate with you know, uh, the Winship's own CPC program or ACS. ACS is actually currently studying a new cancer population uh, phase three program which have more patients and with more biological samples. And, uh, so we talk about all these other opportunities that could potentially help us understanding what allele is at high risk of cancer disparities and how can we do to understand biology of it. Could I have the next slide, please? So the second topic we talk about is whether there's a certain type of somatic mutation that occurs that drives cancer that have difference in different uh, uh, cancers of uh, different ethnic origins. And uh, we, we we briefly talked about the EGFR mutation rate being high in Asian population, but we also focused on discuss, a discussion about this fusion protein in African Americans because that in historically that level seems to be low. But the recent studies indicating, you know, that maybe those in those particular populations they use an alternative mechanism for the Afri uh, for the activation of this pathway in African Americans. So since here we really have opportunity to look at the function of those cancer driver genes. For example, you know, African-Americans have a higher rate uh, of uh, 
BRCA uh, mutations, but not in the known genes. The known genes are actually low, but the, the variant of unknown significance is high in African Americans. So we can potentially do functional analysis. Certain cancer genes seem to be uh, uniquely occurring in underrepresented populations. So the pathway analysis means that could also be helpful. The last thing we discussed is the predictable therapeutic response. Here we talk about the unique tumor characteristic, which includes human microenvironment immune response, and also potential difference in different ethnic groups in the way they metabolize the drug. So here certainly we have the opportunity to collaborate with the TTC program and the cancer immunology program here. Uh, that's basically what we discussed during our breakout session. Thanks. Thank you, Wei. That's a very uh, nice summary of uh, what sounds like a very exciting discussion on key topics, so thank you. Uh, the next, uh, we are gonna turn it over to Dr. Oani Koko to talk about uh, what the group discussed on improving cancer treatments and improving outcomes for, from cancer treatments. Tofik. Thank you, and uh, may I have this slide? It's already on, Tofik. Sorry, let me see that. Okay. Um, so our session yesterday was very engaging. We had about um, eight participants uh, overall. And uh, what we did was to start out by looking at our own Winship data in terms of patient outcome. Uh, specifically, we looked at outcome for patients with early stage lung cancer, uh, where there was really no uh, difference in outcome when we looked at that, out when we look at that by uh, racial background, but there appeared to be what is already known in the literature, better outcome for women compared to men. At the same time, we also looked at outcomes for patients with much more advanced stages of cancer treated on phase one trials, where we actually saw significantly uh, different outcomes when we looked at blacks versus whites uh, enrolled on phase one trials, but we did not see differences by gender, which suggests to us that uh, why this is sort of a snapshot at our patient population that there could be opportunities when we look at different patient population and what their outcome is like in terms of underrepresented minorities. So with that as the background, we then um, went through a systematic way of addressing, of uh, coming up with strategies to help address and bridge these differential outcomes by uh, racial background. Uh, one thing that we mentioned was the realization now that some of the work done here at Winship is showing that immunotherapy could actually be a leveler when it comes to uh, racial differences in outcomes, where uh, if you look at patient treated with immunotherapy, it actually did not matter uh, what the ethnic or racial background of the patient is. It seemed to be uh, effective across all, all uh, patient subgroups. Uh, but part of the challenge is a lot of patients from underrepresented, underrepresented minorities might not want to enroll on those trials. So if we only rely on published data from randomized trials, we won't be able to get all these signals. So looking systematically at efficacy and safety outcomes for African-American patients in particular, but other underrepresented minorities in general, when we have new therapeutic class of agents being adopted in the uh, clinical setting is one area that we feel uh, as an institution we should pay attention to. The next thing we talked about was preclinical uh, testing that feeds into clinical testing and eventually standard of care approaches that we currently do not have sufficient uh, characterization of the preclinical models that we use in terms of their source of origin. Do they represent different biology if truly there is any biological uh, impact in terms of patient ethnic background? Do we need to have models that also represent the various ethnic groups? So we um, identified the cancer animal model shared resource as a particularly useful vehicle for Winship to support, to develop targeted PDX models and cell lines 
uh, from African American patients and other underrepresented ethnic groups uh, to further advance novel treatment approaches in the clinic. And then minimizing barriers to clinical trial participation, uh, we feel oh, in the long run would also help improve cancer treatment outcomes because the more representative the patient going on clinical trials, the better we know about unique toxicity of such agent, and then we can better uh, mitigate the toxicities ahead of this becoming something that is commonly used in the clinic and then for which uh, such patient may not benefit if we did not identify their unique uh, susceptibility to uh, toxicities early on in the development of those agents. Access to care. So we know that uh, patient navigation has been shown to be very helpful uh, in patients when they, especially when they have to go through complex uh, treatment uh, strategies where you have multiple experts weighing in into the treatment of a patient. Having a navigator within the system to help them go from one clinic or one expert to another and outlining for them what the sequence of treatment will be like has been shown to improve outcomes. But what we also know that this is generally very uh, resource intense and oftentimes there is no financial reimbursement for this through insurance. So it then behooves the institution to support the navigation system across our entire network, not just at the main clinical site, uh, so that all of our patients, especially the African-American uh, patient and other underrepresented minorities who may not be coming to the Clifton campus for their care, they may be going to Grady, Emory Decatur, St. Joe's or Midtown, uh, that having the navigation system available to all these sites will be helpful in further enhancing equitable treatment outcome for all of our patients and especially the minority patient. And then patient education, uh, some of the participants brought up the um, issue of you know, generational uh, experience or intergenerational ex experience that may also be influencing the way people process information that you give them and also willingness to go on clinical trials or even to follow recommended treatment. If there is no uh, trust in the healthcare system, it's more likely for someone not to follow the recommended treatment approach or participate in the trial. So having patient education that is tailored to the minority patient population, African-American population, Hispanic and uh, other ethnic minorities will be very important so that we speak to patients in culturally acceptable and culturally sen sensitive manner. That way we are able to pass uh, the information across. Then we had the comment from some of our uh, nursing leadership about the challenges that patients face in the clinic, uh, especially when we recognize that we do have uh, within the system, support system for patients who are maybe underinsured or uninsured uh, with charity care support. But oftentimes that will only cover intravenous infusion that the patient will get when they come into the clinic. And even for some patients with uh, insurance, they may be underinsured that their insurance only covers intravenous infusion that they get in the clinic. But when they go home, some of the supportive care medications and even now, some of the most effective anti-cancer agents are oral medications. So when there is no insurance support for these medications, we see that this would also imperil uh, the uh, benefits that the patient is likely to derive if they cannot afford the treatment. So looking at our patient assistance support program and seeing how that can be modified to further provide uh, oral medication support, just like we do for intravenous infusion would be a way to also ensure uh, good outcomes for patients. And uh, finally, at the national as well as state level, we know that there's uh, differences in policy across states in terms of who pays for oral medications and how they are viewed, uh, whether they are viewed in the same uh, category as expensive intravenous drugs that patients get when they come to the clinic or as oral medications that will not be covered by insurance unless they have a medication plan that is separate from the regular insurance plan. 
So we uh, identified this as an area for the institution to engage in, to help drive the policy um, so that at least in our state of Georgia, we also follow some of the more progressive states across the country where oral cancer medications are supported to be paid for by insurance, just like they do for intravenous anti-cancer agents. Thanks, Tofik. Uh, let's move on to uh, Dr. Torres's working group. She's not able to join because of conflict. So I'll briefly summarize. Uh, uh, they looked at three different themes. One was cancer prevention. The second was access to cancer treatment. And the third was cancer treatment delivery. And obviously you cannot talk about cancer prevention without tobacco control. Uh, they noted disparities in tobacco use, uh, especially in women, uh, low socioeconomic conditions, LGBTQ community, and Georgia being a state where we have very limited uh, tobacco uh, laws, uh, very low taxes. These are issues for us to take on. They also identified HPV vaccination as an opportunity for Winship to address uh, uh, screening, early detection, talking about colorectal cancer, breast cancer. Uh, these are, uh, and I would add lung cancer to that list, uh, these are cancers where we know early detection can save lives. And especially for breast cancer screening, there is a different threshold for screening for African-American patients. So implementing these screening guidelines is gonna be critical. And Georgia not being an affordable care, Medicaid expansion state has also been a barrier. Next slide. Uh, talking about access to cancer treatment, uh, this was an issue that Tofik also touched on, so I won't get too into it, but clearly navigating patients to make sure that patients get the best treatments that are available. Uh, the cancer treatment delivery teams, th theme also talks about that. How can we make sure that uh, compliance to standard treatment protocols are ensured in minority patients? Uh, for instance, black, black patients with breast cancer are less likely to complete hormone therapy because of symptoms are they're not prescribed. So uh, we uh, can educate and uh, address uh, this uh, at uh, our uh, outpatient facilities. And survivorship uh, increasingly is uh, recognized as an important area. Uh, pediatric patients need to be screened for comorbidities when they're receiving drugs like anthracyclines. Uh, symptom burden being higher in black cancer patients is another uh, theme for us to work on. So. Uh, a lot of uh, very interesting uh, topics covered between these three breakout groups. Uh, my hope is that the research programs will take these respective recommendations, think about how this could be integrated into some of the research work, and we will continue to um, work with the programs to uh, address these issues.